Did I pronounce correctly, Kevin? You're you did uh, absolutely. You did a great job, and and so I appreciate that. <laughs> Amazing, right, Kevin? So at this point, you're the last. You have all the time you need. You can start to share your slide. Then you do a, a, your introduction, present yourself, and then start your master class. Fantastic. Let's dig in. I'll see your slide coming in a few seconds. Here we are. Okay, you're, good. you're ready to go, man. Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, Enzo. Uh, I want to make a comment. I was listening in at the last session. Um, Blake framed this really well in that uh, revenue managers, you should be really be focusing in on becoming that commercial leader. I really liked how he tied that together because um, that's really what you're doing. You're, you're, you're driving where you're going with your product, where you're going with your hotel. Um, you're, you are that leader there. So uh, Blake, I appreciate the, the, the uh, tag there or the, the uh, theme. I'm going to drive that now and, and see what we can do with this. But let's Total dig in with you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's dig in. Uh, Revenue Manager, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I get to close out the, the last session of the series uh, from what I understand, but it sounds like uh, that this is going to continue on moving forward, which is really exciting. So I look forward to the next season coming up with the Revenue Manager. AI friend or foe? Well, let me do a quick introduction about myself. Uh, so as you saw in the video there, my name is Kevin Duncan. I am the uh, Senior Director of Strategic Product Initiatives at Sendine. And here at Sendine, we provide sales and marketing and revenue management solutions for the hospitality industry. These focus on integrated hotel CRM, hotel sales, and revenue optimizing tools but a little bit about myself, um, as I said, y'all is, is an acquaintance term here in West Texas. I live in a mid-sized town of West Texas with uh, my lovely wife and two boys. Um, very large garden out in the back, which is why we're here. We wanted some land. And I tell you what, um, the decompress, the de-stress of the day and really five minutes in the garden is, is awesome because it's helped me through um, challenging times, right? Which is what we've, we've all really kind of lived through over the next 12 or over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, but from my career standpoint, I've been in the hospitality industry on the hotel side for 20 plus years, um, really leading sales teams, marketing teams and revenue management, or what we'll say commercial management teams, um, it, with a passion right around revenue management. So I'm, I'm always excited to come in and really speak about revenue management and how do we enhance where we're going within our discipline and, and really within the industry as well. Recently, I, I say recently, it's actually going on four years now I've been on the tech side of things, um, really attempting to solve for and enhance the revenue management experience through the solutions that you see today, the tech solutions that you use today. This quote from Inspired Capital co-founder Alexa Von Tobel perfectly encapsulates the realities of the hospitality industry today. We started the year in 2020 and ended in 2030. Trends have accelerated and we seem to have jumped ahead a decade with transformative change happening seemingly overnight. What are some of those trends that we're walking into within 2021? So I did a Google search prior to jumping on the call today to, to identify what are those hospitality trends. And this is quoted from EHL Insights. It's the 2021 top hospitality industry trends, the top 10. Um, I don't have them on the screen here, but I'll walk you through them. Number one is staycations is a hospitality trend. Number two is digitalized guest experiences and contact, contactless technology. Number three is personalization. Four is experience economy and essentialism. Five, new hospitality skills and asset management. Six is solo travelers. Seven, generations X and Y and the differences that are there. How do you accommodate for them? Number eight is sustainability. Number nine is virtual and augmented reality. And number 10, automation and technology. And that's where we're gonna take today's presentation and drive that a little bit further with automation and technology. But I, what I think is interesting, and especially as I just reread these out loud again, is that there's a theme, there's a common theme that we're gonna pull through this presentation today around AI and machine learning. 
So what's next for revenue management? Where do we go with this? We have an exciting opportunity to hit the reset button and re rethink systems in general. As we look ahead to the post-pandemic landscape, now's the time to really build a revenue management discipline that maximizes revenue during both good times and bad. In this presentation, we'd like to discuss the future of revenue management and new ways to use technology in the hospitality industry. I think this is so exciting. You're in exciting times right now, as difficult as they may be, but really to, to hit that reset button and to really start from scratch and move forward is, isn't it? To me, I'd, if I were back on the hotel side, I'd be like, yeah, this is great. This is where we can really start to challenge ourselves in different ways, our processes, the things that we do from a revenue management and even, even from a leadership experience today. First, we have to start with the data. Uh, data delivers forever. As data-driven marketers and revenue managers, we have long been converts to the power of data. It's not to undervalue professional instinct. It's just that data, when collected accurately and interpreted correctly, doesn't lie. Data is necessary to determine performance and provide both comparative and key metrics that help decision-making. You know, since last year, the complexities of COVID have really, as we just described, caused you to reset, right? Push that reset button. They, they've leveled the playing field that the complexities of COVID have. And we all had to start with a blank state and not just historical data is from that concern, but we had to navigate into a whole new world which requires a clear data-driven approach that mines every piece of data held by your organization for rel relevant insights. Travelers processes and ways of doing business have changed. And I think we're seeing that and we'll continue to see that. What travelers deem important for travel today may not be what it was pre-COVID and, and that top 10 2021 hospitality industry or insights, I should say from EHL Insights, um, gave us some of those, right? What is changing? So therefore the data that marketers and revenue management once considered valuable may not be as useful as it once was. What are some of those data points that I think kind of have that consistent theme though that you're, you'll continue to use moving forward? The arrival departure, when do reservations book? When do they stay? When do they depart? What's the market segment or the control segment, specific room types? And then really where we've seen the industry go and I think it's gonna go even further is the ancillary spend, the food, the beverage and the spa, but not just the, the high level, oh, they went to the spa, and did this, or they went to the spa and spent $150. It's really the detail of the menu item. What are they purchasing when they go in there? And can you start to um, correlate that in some form or fashion with all of the information that you have? Trends, the future of forecasting. While it may be true that forecasting is forever changed, I and mean, after all, you can't always rely on long-term historical data to predict future performance. It's still incredibly useful. You just have to be faster. Rapid forecasting adjusts in real time to micro trends, such as new pockets of demand. Within your forecasting, it's important to keep a keen eye on projections of both the property and market levels. As we've experienced the global impact of COVID and how it really influences the travel patterns, you'll want to have a broader insight on global demand patterns and perspective as well. For example, are there neighboring countries or neighboring states here in the United States that are closing their borders, so to say, that could create a shift in demand, whether it's positive or negative for you? Airline, the airline industry, have they changed flight routes or canceled flights to and from certain destinations? And, and how is that impacting your property or your properties or region? How has the segmentation changed in your environment, even to the, the channel source trends, right? Where's your business? How are they booking their business with you today? Has that changed? And what does that look like? As the situation is constantly evolving, you will need a system or the ability to reforecast and adjust to shifting demand and bright spots quickly. Constant calibration of your revenue management system and processes is necessary to quickly identify change and capitalize on those new segments of demand.
New rules of some segmentation. We, we've touched upon this a little bit already, but let's take that simple segmentation and, and say that it no longer works because the demand has shifted so much. You must go to the micro, the narrow in on the micro trends and the micro segments that are the bright spots of demand. Matching ancillaries, upsells and bundles to each segment opens the door of possibilities. When such level of granularity exists, you will be able to more easily identify micro segments and channels that drive or can drive revenue. Review the combinations that could exist and determine if there's a new trend emerging. And it's funny, I'd, as I was thinking through this presentation, I remember when I first started in revenue management, let's call it 15 years ago, uh, segmentation, when you start to think about segmentation, segmentation back then was I have group and I have transient. And, and then over time, the forecasting evolved to where the key leaders and, and even myself was, this is great, I've got group and transient, but does it really tell me everything that I need to know? No, not really. So then the forecasting evolved to say, well, who is in the transient business and who is in the group guest? And so then you start to go to the micro segment. Right. So then we started adding in the minor segments with the business types. And now we're looking at today, and I think it's it's even evolving further, is hoteliers are dialing in at the most finite level. What channel? How do you forecast per channel? What room type are you starting to forecast at the room type level? What minor market segment and what level of spend? And are there correlations there that you can start to forecast in that direction, if not further? So it's really, we're seeing trending that's leading into, I wanna to get to the most finite granular piece of information. Well, there are new ways to use technology. And, and while algorithms are what drive the RMS intelligent pricing, not all algorithms are created equal. And I think we know that. Some may be better at analyzing historical data to build forecasts to base pricing models on. Others may be strong in predictive analytics that use AI to analyze data in real time to adapt to pricing strategies on the fly. In our experience, and, and those of many hotels and casinos navigating through this pandemic, an AI-driven real-time algorithm is a powerful ally that can intuitively adjust pricing based on both historical data and real-time trends. And, that data is what feeds the system. And that's why I've, I've spent a good amount of time in this presentation just dialed in on the data itself and what does that mean from trending. But now let's take it a step further and, and start to dig into AI and ML, machine learning. So can AI and, and machine learning work and, and facilitate the revenue manager work? Yes, I think it can. This is the decade that artificial intelligence supplants machine learning as the driver of disruption. We've already seen the power of machine learning tools, which can parse data for patterns, make demand forecasts, for an example, or automate pricing decisions. But, but truly, I think we're entering into the dawn of the age of the AI. The main difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning is that artificial intelligence can improve itself in ways that mach machine learning can. AI test assumptions, search for connections between different data sets, make experiments and use those learnings to improve itself and adjust its recommendations on the fly, all at scale and without human intervention. The revenue management systems are only going to get more intelligent as the decade unfolds. The speed and quality of AI's outputs will accelerate, improving conversion rates, maximizing marketing return on investment and segmenting more precisely than humans could ever hope to. That's why those who understand how to get what they need of, out of the machines, out of your technology, will be ideally positioned to thrive. It's really understanding what can I push, what can I pull, what can I receive out of this information, out of this data, this technology that's here today, the system that I use today, and how do I use that? So is AI a friend or a foe? Uh, well, I'll leave that up to you, but um, I think much of this intelligence will lend itself to the promise of true one-to-one -one personalized pricing or, or at most, or at minimum, I should say, a heightened focus on personalization. You know, up until recently, we've been in siloed data and disparate systems, and it's prevented the effective one-to-one -one personalized offers. 
We can translate the historical state patterns into precise demand forecast to automate pricing, but there wasn't really a, a reliable way to aggregate the relevant data in one place or harness a tool that could teach itself beyond the human provided parameters. And it comes back to the business intelligence, the core of the data. Revenue management sales leaders, marketing teams, um, should be equipped with smart technology and tools to help them save time, boost productivity, and implement strategic decision making. You know, I recall times as a revenue manager where I didn't have a proper BI tool or even a BI tool. So it was it was me and a team of, of folks, revenue analysts, that we would extrapolate all the information out of the PMS and create our own Excel worksheets, but it didn't get us to the level that we really needed. It wasn't a powerful BI uh, way to dig into the information. We found ourselves far more time. Let's go find it, right? Let's go create the information rather than actually let's analyze the information and really get into the strategies. And that's where this BI tools, the BI platforms come into play. Uh, on this list that you see on the screen here, we should also really look at it and, and include the, the ancillary spend, right? Are, are we identifying the trends in, in business, including ancillary spend? And where's the ancillary spend coming from? It's, it's encompassing the total, as you've heard the term, I'm sure, total hotel revenue management over and over. And then also, you know, not only the, the channel source of our business, which this is, that's what this is referring to, but the geography source of our business. How are they booking and where are they booking from? And, and so really, what does that BI tool do for you? Well, it provides advanced analytics. We zeroed in on the focus of data at the beginning of this presentation. Without proper clean data, the analytics may be skewed, making it more difficult to dial in on the area that will lead to possible new demand trends or targeted marketing. With the proper tools in place, a BI tool, and the advancement of the technology that's there today with it, you know, the AI and the machine learning and the analytics, hoteliers will, will be able to see a greater speed to market with their strategies. And, and rather than playing the reactive, it starts to get you on the proactive side, the proactive front of, of business and how to do it. We didn't touch upon this through the presentation, but, but I, I do want to give it one, one piece here. Um, blockchain technology. What is blockchain technology? Well, blockchain technology, it's, it's relatively young technology. However, it does have the potential to disrupt the business, the way business has traditionally been done. Um, and, and how could it or, or what impact could blockchain have on the world of hospitality? Um, although the potential uses for the blockchain within the hospitality industry are almost limitless, some applications we've already seen are, are, are becoming emerged and have had a transformative effect while others are just around the corner. So let's, let's poke these a little bit. Travel or traveler ID verification with blockchain technology. Uh, payments, making settlements between different parties like hotels, travel agencies, and aggregators. Broaden loyalty programs, accurate supply management, and optimize hotel profitability by cutting out the middleman. So those are a few uh, where we're starting to see it emerge in terms of blockchain technology. And those are referenced off of revfine.com if you wanted some more information on that as well. So through this master class, hopefully we've been able to dial in and, and pull out some takeaways. What do you do when you leave this master class and, and how do you, you know, take it into action? Well, we talked about the power of data. Data-driven revenue management requires both the right data inputs and the right tools to analyze and act on that data. The revenue manager of 2021 and beyond will need to be able to be an adaptable systems manager or and have a clever analytical thinker, right? Willing to take the calculated risk. And that truly, that's why I love revenue management. That's my passion um, is that it's the analyzation, but it's also taking those calculated risk. But you need to have that proper data, the, the proper tools to set you up for that success. By fully harnessing the power of data and technology, hotels will be able to compete 
in a year of unknowns, uh, things are still changing. If you have read the news or watched the news recently, I mean, markets are, are up and down um, in terms of hotel markets, right? Um, COVID is still there. It's still making an impact, unfortunately. Um, so it's really um, having the power of the data and the technology is going to help us compete in a year of the unknowns, right? Drive that further. And then revenue managers will need to move fast, stay flexible, be nimble, and lean into the both the automation and the creativity that's there in technology. Um, Blake shared a lot in terms of what's there with technology as well, specifically on the ideas side. And it's important to know that, and, and lean into that and drive that. Use your technology to your advantage. And so that's all I have to share today. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to jump on here and speak with you and everybody else. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, it was very interesting, especially this little part where also I'm really interested on blockchain, trying to understand more what is offering, what are the opportunities out there. So thank you for your masterclass. I, I hope the entire you know, audience still there enjoyed your presentation. And uh, of course, this was the last episode, as you know, guys. And we soon will share what is going to be what is going to be the next step, the next project. And I hope and wish that Sedain is going to be part of the plan. Thank you, Kevin, on behalf of everyone, um, Panel TV and Hospitality Net. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.